In this lesson, I am going to talk about the process of solving systems of linear equations using Gauss-Jordan and Gaussian elimination. In our last lesson, we talked about reducing a matrix into its row echelon or reduced row echelon form. Why do we want our matrix to be in this form? Recall that when we have a system of linear equations, we can construct the corresponding augmented matrix. If we transform the augmented matrix into echelon form, it will make it easier for us to analyze the solutions to the corresponding systems of linear equations. Let me illustrate this using the next example. Suppose we have our systems of equations here. The first step that we need to do is to write down its augmented matrix. Recall that we have missing variables here, so don't forget to include 0. We have 0x2, and I have 0x1. There you go. If we now record the coefficients and the constants that we have over here, we have our augmented matrix here. If we reduce this matrix to its row echelon form, we will obtain the following matrix. Let us interpret this as a system of linear equations. Recall that this column would represent x1. This would correspond to x2, x3, and x4. Hence, our last row, we always start with the last row, means that x4 is equal to negative 7. The second row means that x2 plus 3x3 is equal to negative 1. The first row is saying that x1 plus x2 minus 6x3 plus x4 is equal to negative 4. And we now substitute. We now have our value that x4 is negative 7. I will now solve for the remaining variables. From the second equation, we have that x2 is equal to negative 1 minus 3x3. Let me just write my x4 here. Upon solving for x1, we have that x1 is negative 4 minus x2 plus 6x3 minus x4. And let us substitute the values that we have. My x2 is negative 1 minus 3x3 plus 6x3. My x4 is equal to negative 7. So this becomes positive 7. Hence, we get that x1 is equal to 4 plus 9x3. We now have the following. Let us go back to our row echelon form. If we look at our leading entries, our leading entries are 1, 1, and 1 here. Notice that the first, second, and fourth column are what we call pivot columns because they contain our pivots or leading entries. And what does that mean? Look at this one. You have x1, x2, and x4. They correspond to our pivot columns. We were able to solve for x1, x2, and x4 here. But if you look at our third column here, this is a non-pivot column. The non-pivot columns would represent free variables. What do we mean by free variables? It is simply saying that x3 can be any real number. It also means that the other variables would be expressed in terms of your free variable over here. Again, if you have basic variables, the basic variables would correspond to your pivot columns. They will always appear exactly once, whereas the free variable, in this case x3, will appear more than once here. So what would be a solution to your system of linear equations? If we write x3 to be equal to r, r is a real number, 
your x1 would be 4 plus 9r. x2 is negative 1 minus 3r. x4 is equal to negative 7. Hence, a solution set would be of this form. x1, the first variable, 4 plus 9r. The second variable, x2. The third variable, x3, is r. And then x4 is negative 7, where r is any real number. Hence, in this case, we have infinitely many solutions. So, for example, one particular solution is if r is equal to 0, our solution would be 4, negative 1, 0, negative 7. Let's say if r is equal to 1, one solution would be 13, negative 4, 1, negative 7. These are just one of the many solutions. Again, it is very important that you know your pivot and non-pivot columns. The pivot columns correspond to your basic variables, whereas the non-pivot columns would correspond to your free variables. Notice also that since in this case when we have a free variable, this system here has infinitely many solutions. Let me summarize the steps that we did to solve the previous example. First is that we reduce the augmented matrix into its row echelon form. Second, we use back substitution to solve for all the remaining variables. This step one over here, the process of reducing the augmented matrix into its row echelon form is what we call Gaussian elimination. Going back to the previous example, I still have my system of equations here. This is my augmented matrix. Now, instead of reducing this matrix into its row echelon form, I will be reducing it to its reduced row echelon form, which would be given by this matrix here. I still have my x1, x2, x3, and x4. But if you look at its reduced row echelon form, it would be easier for us to identify the solutions for our system. In this case, if you look at our first row, this one would mean x1 minus 9x3 is equal to 4, x2 plus 3x3 equals negative 1, and x4 equals negative 7. Hence, x1 is equal to 4 plus 9x4, x2 is equal to negative 1 minus 3x3, we have x4 equals negative 7, and Notice again that we will do what we did earlier. We have 1, 1 here. x3 is a non-pivot column and hence it is a free variable. x3 is just any real number so that's why it does not appear here. What is the nice thing if we reduce the augmented matrix into its reduced row echelon form? We no longer have to use back substitution and just by looking at our matrix, it will be easier for us to get the solutions of our system of equations. This process of solving a system of linear equations by reducing the matrix form to its reduced row echelon form is called Gauss-Jordan elimination. So let's just compare the two, Gaussian elimination and Gauss-Jordan elimination. Again, for Gaussian elimination, we transform the augmented matrix to REF, whereas for Gauss-Jordan elimination, we transform it into its reduced row echelon form. For Gaussian elimination, the solutions cannot be easily seen from the matrix because we still need to use back substitution. Whereas for Gauss-Jordan elimination, the solutions are easily seen from the matrix. And of course, there is no need for back substitution. In our next lesson, we are going to describe the solutions of systems of linear equations.